Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield, an interesting type of market, and we're going to talk more in depth about what's been happening within the trade, especially when you look at some maybe bigger sell-offs taking place, a flip in the basis. What about packer margins, and will this cash continue to go higher? And is there a possibility that a low might have taken place in the futures. We're going to get all the details from the guy you see on the screen. That is Brad Coima. He is with Coima, Coima and Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. So I think let's start there, Brad. Big basis flip taking place. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I think you hit the nail on the head, Susan. Uh, you know, up until this week, we had an unusual basis situation where you had, I thought, you know, because of, of you know, the enthusiasm of the, the long speculator, most most namely the, the, the funds, uh, these big fund money, money managers that are looking at a, what they believe a, a political climate and an economic climate that would suggest that we're going to have inflation. Um, also, you know, you've got a situation here where, uh, you know, we're coming out of the, the maybe the biggest black swan event we've ever seen in the cattle industry, what is COVID. Uh, you know, as we start to get back on our feet with that. Um, so we had the futures market carry a premium, anticipating that things were going to get better. Well, we wondered when we were going to adjust or flip this basis back to what would be more normal, which by this time of year uh, would not be uncommon at all, that futures would be five, eight. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were 12 under cash this time of year. Uh, you know, as that market starts to anticipate that we're moving toward more supply. Um, so that maybe is a big uh Part of what happened here, uh, I mean, yeah, you sit here and you try to make excuses for the sell-off, which is what it feels like I'm doing. But I, I, I guess that that seems to be part of the explanation, at least, that we uh, have now taken the basis to a much more normal um, situation. It doesn't make me any less confident that the cash market's all right. I, I think it's fact that I think it's better than all right, Susan. As you look at what we've seen within the trade, is there a bigger than expected sell-off going on? Well, for me, it was. I mean, I thought we maybe we'd. Uh, I kind of like that 120 to 50 to 120 70 level on the on the June cattle. As, as anybody that's probably got a chart book in front of them, they had maybe the same trend line drawn. It was also right the same spot as the 40 day moving average was this morning, and and you know that first low this morning for the first two hours held there. And I thought, well, that's good. Let's that's a good spot to catch. Let's let's get up and out of here. Um, but it, it appeared to some of us here that it looked like you know this. High open interest in the June cattle has led to a larger fund position. We love them when they're on our side, but that also means that more of them have to move out of their lawns at some point too. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit like chasing pigs, right? They all try to get through the same gate at the same time. And uh, uh, sometimes they fall over themselves, right? I, I, sometimes I sometimes I think the market's like a flock of starlings, Susan, and I don't mean to make light of it because I've been at it a while, but it's like, so what happens when all of a sudden they all, 500 of them decided to all fly that way for a while, right? I mean, I, it, sometimes the market is weird like that, right? Uh, I have a tendency to be fundamentally biased, Susan. Uh, I don't really make uh, apologies for that. Uh, I, I think that the fundamentals of the cattle are rock solid. Um, I think that the between um, the cost of gain being what it is, uh, we were already trending with lower weights and we'll continue to trend that direction. We actually maybe finally sold some cattle last week, speaking personally anyway, that might actually make a little money. I mean, uh, so we're going to be, I think, anxious and aggressive to sell, especially with the futures at a discount. I think we're just going to be super current going into there. And I don't think you can underestimate just how spectacularly good demand is. Um, so, you know, maybe the packer could share a little of $600 ahead that he's, he's making on these cattle. If we bow our neck a little bit, I think we can get more for our cash cattle. And uh, that's what I still think cash cattle will be higher in spite of the sell off this week. Well, you talk about the Packers. What about their margins right now? Well, uh, I got to be careful what I say, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're huge. And why are they huge? Because they can. Uh, and why can they? Uh, because there are some in the industry, I believe, that are dead set on turning cattle in and uh, not negotiating for enough cash cattle. Um, so, that's the spear I carry. Um, I, I think when you've got this much margin, um, you would think that the collectively the feedlots would say, hey, you know what? We don't have to take steady lower bids. We think we should be able to get a little more. And I'm going to be optimistic. And I think that's still what we're going to see this week as we move forward and into next week. I, uh, I think it'd be difficult to take a lot off the cash. Uh, the show list in the north, uh, we've talked about this, I know, a number of times on your program. Um, and, you know, it was very, very obvious this week. Show list in Nebraska and Iowa, very, very, very current. Um, so 
guy's done a good job up here and I like it when the North is premium the South. That's very characteristic of a, of a bull market, frankly. So I, yeah, futures market notwithstanding and the technical sell off that we had, I still think the fundamentals are, are pretty solid. There's a lot of uh, fingers that are going into the pot considering where we are in the month of April. We've got Mother's Day coming up, graduations, folks just wanting to get back out, whether it's restaurants or, you know, grilling in their backyards. Is that going to have an influence with the strength we've seen in the beef trade? Well, I think you raise a good point, Susan. I, I, I don't know if I've said it on your show or not, but, um, you know, if you want to do a little trivia question with your, uh, you know, driving in the coffee shop or whatever, what is the, the weekend that uh, has the best beef demand of any weekend of the year? Answer is Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Um, and I don't, is it just because it's Mother's Day or is it part of it because you finally got nice weather? Uh, you know, let's grill a steak for mom or let's take her out for a steak. Uh, but there's a whole series of events like you just, just said. You know, first of all, the weather's finally good enough. Uh, that you want to maybe go out and grill, even though I grill year round, but uh, not everybody does. Then you got Mother's Day, then you've got Memorial Day, then you got Father's Day. And then this year, on top of it all, you've got this pent up demand, I believe, uh, for some of the segment of the people that says, doggone it, I want to go out to eat once. And, uh, um, you know, I, we had a chuckle in here a little while ago. We were, uh, there was there maybe just a bit of good natured wagering on the Masters Golf Tournament. And the wager was a steak dinner. You notice that nobody bets a pork chop dinner or a chicken breast dinner. Um, sorry for those of you that raise chickens and pork, but um, you know, th there is that element of gosh, let's just go back to normal a little bit here. Right. So I think you make a good point. And I think demand is going to stay uh, surprisingly good, uh, better than maybe we've ever seen it. Well, as we wrap up the cattle call, can we expect to the lows that we saw, for example, in the futures today, can we say the low is in place? To finish out this week maybe please well sure um <laughs> in my opinion i thought the market got deeper than it deserved to do anyway today uh i was happy with that we came back off the lows i think especially the deferred cattle when you got a high price corn environment you know uh corn made new contract ties today um that hurt the feeder cattle that in turn hurt us a little bit but ultimately high price corn leads to higher price livestock and so i think you know, whether or not the June is probably the one that's maybe got a little bit of the um, girl in the closet. You know, if we got to have more fun liquidation, but I'd like to think the deferreds probably did catch. And, and it wouldn't totally shock me that the whole thing might not have caught today, especially if we get a little firmer cash tomorrow on Friday. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much for joining us this week, Brad. Very, very welcome. Glad to be on. That is the cattle call. Just a reminder, commodity futures and options involve substantial risk of loss and they're not suitable for all investors. That's the cattle call. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network.